Uh, I missed this sound. And I just check it on YouTube. Yeah, okay, so the string, that's perfect. And in that case, I'm going to start the presentation. Yeah, okay, so today I have prepared a presentation, a talk about uh, GKL RDF. Uh, in the beginning, I'll just tell you what is GKL. Uh, I suppose that some of you, uh, that most of you know, uh, know what the GKL is. So GKL is a Ruby-based uh, static set generator by Tom, Tom Preston Warner. Uh, it's open source on the MIT license. Uh, its web pages uh, are written down here, gklrb.com, and it uh, allows uh, you quite easily to create uh, static web pages uh, using uh, Ruby, using uh, Liquid, uh, Liquid language, and Markdown, Gramdown, this kind of stuff. So basically, you are creating the Markdown, uh, Markdown files, and uh, it based on those files and on some rules uh, which are defined in the uh, Ruby in the GKL, uh, GKL uh, configuration. It uh, creates uh, quite easily, quite nice uh, static web pages. So maybe you have uh, seen this page. This is completely made in GKL or this one uh, for this, which is uh, documentation for Termit. Uh, it has quite a lot of advantages. I think that uh, one of the best advantages is that it's uh, really easy to uh, work with GitHub. So you can create the GitHub pages, uh, the documentation, and uh, you can tell GitHub, okay, this part of repository, this is documentation, so create uh, static pages based on this, publish it here and here, and uh, this serves as a documentation uh, for the repository. So this is a case of Termit. Uh, the case of KBSS, uh, we are serving it on our server. So the second uh, thing how you can uh, use GKL is that uh, you just uh, tell him GKL build. Uh, it builds you the static pages uh, in the specific folder, which is called uh, site. And uh, you just copy this uh, content of site folder anywhere you want on the internet. And uh, this is your, this is your uh, web page. It supports quite a lot of teams. Uh, this is one of the uh, most uh, complete catalogs of GQL teams, gqlteams.io. Uh, you can find some free uh, free uh, teams. Uh, some are paid. Uh, it's not uh, super expensive. Most of them are up to $100, uh, which is not so expensive. Uh, regarding that uh, it can give you a really nice, really professional looking like uh, web pages. Uh, we are usually looking at the minimal mistakes, which is here on the right. Uh, both Termit and uh, KBSS uh, pages are based on these uh, minimal mistakes. It is done uh, in a way that uh, it's uh, really easy to use and it's almost impossible to create some mistakes. But uh, you know, uh, I create quite a lot when I was playing with that, and I think that it's quite a uh, common thing. Okay, uh, it's Ruby based, uh, so there is a lot of plugins, and it is really easy to install those plugins uh, using a gem file. I will uh, show it to you later, but right now you can uh, see that. There is uh, a user on GitHub which is called PlanetGKill, and it uh, has a repository with the almost complete list of uh, GQL plugins. Uh, it can help you with a lot of stuff. Uh, and uh, right here on the right uh, side of the page, you can see uh, what uh, GQL documentation tells us about the plugins. So. Uh, it's really, really easy to work with that. Uh, it just, uh, you just need to install it somehow, which you can do uh, using the gem, uh, gem command, or uh, just writing it into the gem file and then rebuild it uh, using the package bundle. And uh, then you just configure it in the configuration file uh, in YAML, uh, which is uh, the basic part of the, uh, the GKill. Uh, GQL repository, and uh, then 
if you have configured it's it's just working that's it and uh, i want to speak today about the gkl rdf uh, so uh, what are we trying to achieve using the gkl rdf uh, on the left side you can see that we have some some graph uh, i used uh, as an example some data from uh, wikidata uh, it's about uh, the Czech ice hockey player uh, Jiří Hrdina, who had a uh, birthday yesterday, so this is why I chose him. <laughs> and you can see that on the left side we have some RDF. Uh, this is uh, this is knowledge graph, and uh, basically what we want to do is that we want to represent the data in the knowledge graph uh, in some human readable way. We want to construct a web page based on that. So from the information we have on the left side, uh, we could uh, recreate something uh, like on the uh, right side. So Yuri Hrina was born in the city of Mladá Boleslav on the 5th January 1958, which is exactly what is uh, in the graph on the left side. But uh, as we are teaching our students in uh, uh, semantic web, uh, ontology is some of the web uh, subject uh, we tell them that uh, the difference is that if you do it uh, from this semantic web uh, site uh, the computer understands the meaning of the sentence so basically uh, if i look into this resource so we can data wiki q168 this is how it is uh, rendered in the wikidata dot uh, org and uh, Basically, what JQL RDF as a plugin does is that uh, it allows the users to render the data in some way, which may be like this uh, example in the Wikidata. It also may be different, uh, so I'll speak about that in the few uh, following few minutes. So uh, basically, it's JQL RDF. It's a plugin for rendering RDF data into the static web pages. It is. Uh, uh, it has a repository on GitHub. Uh, if you look into the repository, you see that most of the contributors are Germans, uh, and most of those Germans are coming from, from Leipzig University. So basically, I suppose that uh, this is the child of the, uh, of the Leipzig University, or at least a lot of people from the university are uh, contributing to this repository. Uh, in the readme file, there is quite complete documentation. It's not always really easy to read, uh, but uh, in the end, uh, you will achieve uh, what you what you want, uh, meaning uh, that you can render your RDF data. And uh, I will show you how to do that in the few slides. So first, uh, we need to create a JQL page. Uh, we can do that uh, by those three commands: so gem install bundle JQL. This install the uh, JQL uh, JQL package. Second, uh, second thing is that you need to create a new JQL page. Uh, so I used uh, JQL JQL new is the command, and RDF pages is the name of the page. It creates the whole new folder which contains everything uh, what is needed uh, to compile. And then you just enter into that folder. That's it. When you have it, you need to install the RDF plugin. And here on the right side, uh, we see something which is called the gem file. Uh, as, uh, as I said, uh, Jekyll is based on Ruby. In Ruby, you can have the gem file. And the gem file contains the basic uh, commands, basic information about plugins, about uh, the versions, and this kind of stuff. And if you run bundle install, install it downloads everything uh, from the gem file, including the dependencies. Or uh, you can just run bundle update. Uh, it just updates uh, what has changed uh, in the gem file. Uh, I had some issues uh, during that. Uh, the only thing I needed to download was libyaml uh, slash dev package. Uh, I used uh, uh, aptitude for that. Uh, but uh, it's not so difficult to find out uh, what's wrong because it tells you something. You just Google it and it tells you in the first uh, first result that you need to install the YAML dev. So if you look on the right, the right side, we can see that uh, in this gem file what we have here, uh, the sources from where we are uh, downloading the packages. Uh, uh, we can specify the name of the package and its version. So we are using JQL in version 3. 
point uh, one this is done because uh, jekyll rdf is not supported in the most recent version it's uh, always a little bit behind uh, i think that uh, 3.9 is not the newest version which is supported but it's something which uh, worked for me uh, then uh, we need to use some team uh, this is the minima, this is the default uh, default team. Uh, if you create a new Jekyll site, the minima is uh, the basic team, uh, which is supported uh, in the version 2.5. Uh, then I needed to download or uh, include the gram down parse GFM. Uh, And also, this is something I found out quite easily because when I was trying to compile the pages, uh, it told me that it doesn't uh, have the Kremlin parser GFM which is needed. So I just added it here to the gem file. And then we are looking for some plugins. Uh, the plugin which is which we are interested in is the GKRDF plugin in the version 3.2. So this is how to include the plugin and how to install it by running the bundle update. And then we need to configure it uh, somehow. <clears throat> in the Jekyll, uh, Jekyll folder, uh, or in the folder of the Jekyll page, uh, we have the file config, uh, config ML. And there are three steps of the configuration which are needed in order to, uh, to make, it, make it work. So the first step, uh, we need to define the base URL and URL of the page. Uh, this is something uh, which is not so much connected uh, to the RDF uh, because it is used anyway. And in the uh, in the configuration, we just specify what is the URL of the page, uh, which is basically the host name and the protocol. So I can run it uh, on Michael slash uh, Michael main. How is called slash no dash no Michael minus net dot cz. That's cool, okay. And the base URL is uh, where on this server the page is running. So it may be empty or it may be something like KBSS web or something like that. So I used uh, KBSS web. Uh, why is it important for the uh, RDF uh, plugin? Is that uh, if you do not say otherwise, it expects that all the base areas of the data, uh, RDF data, will have. Uh, this uh, base uh, array. Uh, base array is the combination of URL and base URL. Uh, you don't need to have it uh, like this. You can rewrite it. So that means that you can use uh, different, uh, different base array for the RDF and uh, different base URL uh, for the page itself. Uh, I will show you later. But uh, if you do not specify the base IRI for the uh, RDF, it uses this combination. Second thing is we need to tell uh, Jekyll that uh, we want to use this plugin. So uh, in the in the section plugins, uh, you just uh, include the Jekyll RDF like uh, this. Uh, so it's uh, minus Jekyll RDF. And the last thing to configure is that uh, is uh, that in the uh, next part of the config uh, YAML file, you just set the uh, set some uh, attributes. So you tell them that you want to set up the Jekyll RDF. And right here, this is quite uh, funny. Uh, look that uh, right here, this is not a minus. This is the underline. So this is something I which I was uh, work, uh, fighting uh, with for like three hours because it wasn't working. It was telling me that uh, I don't have configured Jekyll RDF. And uh, the problem was that uh, right here, in the Jekyll RDF, it's not with the minus, it's with the underline. So uh, just be aware of that. And uh, right here, you can define some of the attributes, so uh, configure the, uh, the plugin. So, so the first uh, attribute, uh, which is quite important, is attribute path. And uh, right here, you specify where to look for the data. So the easiest thing is that uh, you have the data uh, somewhere in the in the structure, in the first uh, folder structure, so I have it in data RDF people.ctl. Then you specify some template. Uh, so uh, this is uh, the way how the data is uh, rendered. Uh, I will show you later in more detail how it looks like. But uh, basically, this is some uh, HTML file that you include in the layouts uh, or yeah, in the layouts uh, uh, folder. Uh, in the uh, in the Jekyll repository, 
And right here, I told you about the base IRI. So if it differs so from the combination of URL and base URL, you can define the base area here. So base area for the uh, for this RDF people data is uh, on TOEFL, CV, TCZ, uh, slash ontology, slash KBSS web. So this is the basic configuration. And using this configuration, uh, this is the e easiest way how to make it uh, make it work. So uh, the base path specification, this is what I was talking about uh, before. So this is the combination of URL and base URL, or if you have specified base array. So uh, usually if I have those base array specified like this, this means that if I have a resource uh, in, with uh, this, uh, this identif identifier, so it comes from the base array and uh, ends with uh, Miroslav Mashko. So it renders the page uh, in the base URL uh, folder slash Miroslav Blaško.html. So that's it. Uh, then we are using some templates. Uh, we can use specific templates for specific data, uh, which can be uh, which can be defined uh, in uh, using the attributes class template mappings, mappings or instance template mappings. Uh, you can see here that uh, if I want to use a specific uh, template for all uh, instances of uh, for a person, I can. Uh, I can define it here that uh, attribute custom uh, pink uh, is that for every instance of person I use the person HTML uh, template, or I can uh, define it for the specific instances. So uh, if I have the instance uh, ontology team, so for this instance uh, I can use the team HTML uh, template. All those templates have to be. Uh, present in the repository, otherwise it doesn't have any templates to use. But uh, you can, uh, you have some variability uh, with uh, rendering the data. So that's it. Uh, and how the template looks like. So as I said before, you place it in the layout directory, and it may look like this. Uh, so basically, you create some HTML body, and in this body, you can use some uh, some specific keywords uh, which work for the RDF. So in this case, uh, for the resource, uh, I use the page RDF uh, with the property fourth name, and this property I'm writing uh, here in this uh, in this line, and in the next uh, line, I'm rendering. Uh, if there is uh, some, if there are some other resources uh, on this uh, in this resource uh, which are starting with this uh, base array, I can uh, also render those names. That's it. Uh, sorry, sorry, Michal, could you explain it better? Uh, so, I will. I will show you better in the uh, in the future. I have some live demo okay. prepared. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so then we also can use some other attributes uh, with the restrictions. Uh, basically, if we have the large amount of data, uh, we can uh, restrict uh, the rendering only to some specific uh, specific query. So we can use uh, the Sparkle query uh, in the uh, attribute restriction. So for example, in this one, I'm selecting all the resource series uh, in case uh, where for all the resources which knows uh, some resource uh, Martin Ladvinka. So all people that know Martin Ladvinka, not people, all resources that know Martin Ladvinka will be already presented here. So uh, we can use this restriction, we can use it for uh, restricting uh, it uh, for usage of a specific template, or we can use it uh, just uh, that we want to restrict uh, the data which will be rendered, meaning that uh, those uh, who doesn't respond uh, to the query are not rendered at all, for example. So that's it. And we have some other options. Uh, we can set if uh, we are rendering blank nodes uh, or not. Uh, we can set the default language. Uh, in this case, we have set it for in, uh, English, we can set it for any other language, so we can... Uh, this is uh, good for support of multilingual pages, for example. Uh, we see that, uh, for example, the JQL page uh, used for Termit is multilingual, so if you base it on some RDF data, 
uh, we can just switch the default language for every uh, every um, language mutation for each language mutation and th that's it so it's quite easy to set it up somehow and here is the data sample which I was using uh, so I created uh, two resources Miroslav Vlaška and Martin Medvinka uh, both are FWAF persons and uh, they have FWAF name uh, which is string and they know each other that's it uh, this is a really easy data sample but it works so how to build the site if we have everything everything set up we just call the jkill build command and the jkill build command is uh, compiling all the data and it creates this uh, site file which includes all of the data uh, it includes everything in, you need uh, to serve the page including some css style and assets page pictures everything and right here you see that for every resource uh, which is present in the in the RDF data, data you have created an HTML file. So we have martinadvinka.html and miroslavlaška.html and uh, it looks like this in the data. So if you look at this KBS as Miroslav Blaško, you see that name, that's it. Okay, so uh, the resource access, uh, those are some specific keywords which we can use to access uh, the resources. Basically, we have the, uh, we are using those uh, double, uh, double uh, brackets, double double brackets. So the page RDF uh, basically shows what is the uh, thing itself. This is the representation of the, of the resource. And if you use the IRA, in the end, uh, it's uh, the identifier of this resource. So if you want to talk, talk about uh, the, the thing itself, it's page RDF. If you want to talk about its identifier, it's page RDF.iri. Some other stuff you can do is, so if you have page RDF, uh, you, uh, you are building basically triples using uh, the... Uh, I'm really not sure how it is this sign called in English. It's, uh, can you help me somehow, please? Pipe. Pipe? Okay, so it's pipe. So we are using pipes to build uh, the triples. So this tells you that uh, you are looking for the uh, for the thing with uh, the RDF property for nodes. So if you use like this, so uh, you know you get uh, the result uh, HTTPS ontology should see that ontology KBS with Martin Advika because Mirab Lashko knows him. And uh, you can uh, create a pipeline using those pipes. So, so right here, I'm on the uh, on the identifier of uh, Martin Advika. If I want to see its name, I can just add another pipe and uh, look for the RDF property of, of name. So yeah, right here there is a mistake. Instead of semi uh, semicolon or colon, uh, there should be the underline on the data. It's I will show you in that uh, in the live demo, and we can also use the Sparkle queries. Uh, so uh, for the in the template, uh, so basically I can uh, use assign query. I will write uh, some query here, and then I assign the result set uh, for the page RDF using this Sparkle query, and then I can use all the uh, variables uh, which I get from the uh, from the query result uh, in the uh, as, as the variables building the page. So in this case, I'm selecting some uh, sub and pref from uh, from the graph uh, where uh, the sub sub is subject and pre is predicate and the resource theory it can be filtered some way. So so that's it. And uh, I'm just uh, writing so, it into sorry, the sorry. same. Hmm? So can I uh, ask? So uh, so this page RDF returns this RDF which is behind the page, right? Yes. And this is queried by by the query. But by this query, which is uh, which is defined here in the in the first uh, line, yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, and uh, then there was a problem with reading multiple data. Uh, I was playing with the RDFG kill uh, because I wanted uh, to use it on the KBSS uh, website. And I had a problem that uh, it works only with the one file. You cannot uh, upload more files uh, and uh, use different files or combine it together. 
So I asked uh, in the GitHub uh, and I got uh, the answer that uh, it's not possible to upload multiple files, uh, but there is a workaround. You can upload uh, multiple files into some uh, Sparkle endpoint, into some uh, triple store, and you can uh, you can choose uh, the remote endpoint uh, in the attributes. It's all uh, defined in the uh, in the documentation, and uh, you can access uh, this endpoints. That means that instead of using the turtle file, uh, you attach uh, attach uh, the GQL, uh, GQL page to the uh, to some specific endpoint, and you are getting all the data from there. Uh, so this is also good. Uh, for the usage of the Sparkle and uh, Sparkle uh, queries, you usually don't uh, want to work the whole content of the endpoint. And uh, right now, we'll show you the, right, uh, the demo. And I think that I'm uh, sharing only the presentation. Yep. So, right now, I'm stopping the presentation and I'll show the entire screen. Yes. Am I sharing? Yeah, I see the tunnel. Yeah, yeah, you are. Okay, so I show you how does it look like. Uh, right here, I have the project. Uh, in the project, I have this jib file. Then I'm, I have this configuration file. In the configuration file, this is basically the configuration file generated by uh, by Jekyll himself. So I can uh, set the title, email, description, this kind of stuff. But what is important here is that uh, I'm using the plugins. So I set the plugin for GKL RDF. And in here, uh, this is the configuration of GKL RDF. So I tell him, uh, look for those data. Use this RDF have layout. You, sorry, so, sorry, have you been <coughs> talking about specifying this file, the only one, this path, or what? what? Because you said you can set up uh, only one one file. Yes, 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 yes. In this pass, you can have only one file, but it's possible okay. uh, to uh, access the remote uh, remote data uh, instead of the local data. And as the remote data, you can specify the Sparkular endpoint. So you can okay, use it yes. instead of this type of file. Uh, then you set the default template, uh, template which is RDF layout. Uh, I have, have have it saved here on the left side in the layout. So the, this is the RDF layout. It, is quite easy. It looks like uh, like, like this. So this is some HTML page with the head uh, and with the body. In the body, there is some header, and uh, the header defines the content, uh, which is basically everything that you can uh, you which can get there. And then I uh, try to render the name, and so page RDF uh, with pipe and RDF property for name, and then I want to know who. Uh, who does uh, this person with this name know? So I render the page RDF, RDF property for of nodes, and then I continue in the pipeline with RDF property for of name. So this is the basic layout. If I would like to use specific layouts for specific classes, I can uh, edit into this configuration uh, part of the uh, config uh, YAML file. So that's it. I can show the uh, the input data. So this is the same as I showed you before. So it's Miroslav Blaško, Novink, Martina Levinka, Martina Levinka, Novin, Novin Blaško. So that's it. And uh, how to make it run? Uh, so I just get into this file and basically I use the bundle. Uh, so sorry, Jekyll build. And Jekyll build is. Okay, bundle exec. So I can hide it into the bundle exec. If I run this uh, command, uh, it's a it's uh, building the site again. You can see that uh, it's it's done. Generated feed for post, and right here in this site, uh, I have generated all the files I needed. And uh, I can also run it locally. So this is the similar command. It's a uh, button exit to kill serve. And it rebuilds it again and uh, ser served at uh, the local host. So that's it. I can look in the page. So this is the page. 
And uh, right now on this page, uh, I can add, so uh, in the future, eventually, I can add some links uh, to those resources or the stuff. I can use some temp specific templates for that. Uh, so you can build quite a complex uh, page only using the circle files. Uh, but I'm here just to show you how does it work. So if I say here, Miroslav Blaško. Sorry. Well, I get uh, what I uh, asked in the template. So the name is Miroslav Vasko and he knows Martina Divinka. If I ask for Martina Divinka, it will be similar. Yeah. And uh, the thing is, uh, in this layout, if I want to make it more interesting, I can just uh, include the identifier and I'll do it like, like this. So if I want the inner differ, I just uh, remove the last part of the pipeline. Uh, you see that it was regenerated automatically, meaning that uh, it uh, notices that I have changed something in the data and it regenerates it. So I think that if I look at it uh, right now in the first sheet, yes, I get the ident uh, identifier of the resource. So that's it. Uh, this is the most uh, simple demo, so most simple example of what I wanted to show you. And yes, and this is some additional reading. The full documentation is in the in this GitHub repository, and uh, there is also a paper uh, on uh, AGKRDF. So this is also quite nice to look at. And that's all from my side for now. And I uh, hope that uh, it was inspirational for you. And maybe you have some uh, some questions. I'm not really sure that I'm able to answer that, but uh, I will try. Okay, maybe I have uh, questions. Oh, I was just wondering because there are so many frameworks for, for like building like static websites. I was just wondering why why you started with this one over like some other one. Is it because of the language? Because you wanted to use Ruby or for no, it was uh, it was when we started uh, to build uh, the Termit web pages, uh, the documentation for Termit. Uh, we were looking into some uh, some stuff, and I just like this one uh, most. Uh, I think this is uh, really uh, easy to build it, and I like using the markdown. <laughs> That's uh -huh. all. Okay. okay. <laughs> and then we were uh, discussing. Uh, like a year ago, we started to think about uh, rebuilding the uh, web pages of uh, KBSS. And it was originally built in uh, something different. I'm not really sure how it's called. Uh, I think that Matej Kulich, uh, he was doing something with that. I'm not really sure. And uh, then we had a discussion about that. And we uh, we just agreed that uh, we will use uh, Jekyll because it's uh, more simple. That's it. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, Michal, if I understand it correctly, this is the, the plugin is just for populating a web page from RDF data. Yes, basically. So, if, for example, if a client asks for RDF data, uh, it won't work. So, it's not like uh, returning the correct format based on the accept. Uh, mm -hmm. of the request. I don't think so, yes. I think that it would be possible to edit uh, there somehow, uh, but uh, this is basically not the uh, not, uh, not the use case of the plugin. The plugin is uh, used for rendering the RDF data into the, into the uh, HTML pages. So okay. basically, semantic web. Okay, I see. Thanks. 
uh, basically, I think that it's not a big problem for Jekyll to serve uh, the RDF data somehow. Yeah, somehow. The question is how. <laughs> Okay, uh, so um, maybe I would ask, um, uh, could you have multiple templates? I, I'm not sure if I understood how you could do like multiple templates of generating data. Uh, multiple templates, yes. Uh, you can have multiple templates. You have the default template, uh, which is uh, defined in uh, the configuration. Uh, so in here you have the default template, uh, and uh, this is used uh, if there is no other rule uh, that uh, refers to that template. And otherwise you can add the templates. Uh, I had it in the presentation somewhere in the upper part. Uh, for those templates you can, uh, yes. You can use the class, class template mapping or instance template mapping. So you can use those uh, attributes. Uh, basically, you just write it into the configuration file. So I can uh, use here the class template mappings. And in here, I use the uh, pair of, uh, of the class and the template used. So basically, I can say for person uh, we'll be using the person HTML and uh, I don't know, RDFS class. Like this, you see? So in this way, I can uh, I can define specific templates. So basically, right now, if I uh, if I'm trying if the GQL is trying to render some uh, some of the data. So it checks if it's a uh, person or if it's uh, RDFS class. And if not, it uses the default template. Otherwise, it uses the template which is uh, specified for the, for the specific class. Or I can use that uh, instance template mapping, uh, which works the same for the instances, uh, specific instances. Is it uh, understood, you know? I hope so. So any other questions? Uh, yeah, it was clear. Uh, just could you put it back on this configuration mm -hmm. part? So we could basically substitute uh, what you had if you would remove uh rdf class and instance template mapping it would work the same because the uh, that person was of type person yeah so okay okay i guess i understand yeah. to some I just extent. Quite a lot of not sure about questions. the instances but but okay i guess it's okay. okay there's quite a, a lot of stuff which you can uh play with in this but uh you know, right now this is this presentation is over half an hour, and uh, it would take another hour to uh, to get into more detail. So I just uh, recommend you to like look into this uh, GitHub repository and in this readme file, uh, which is quite uh, long. You have everything uh, showed with the examples. Yeah. You can just uh, list the. Uh, in here, you can just use the restriction that you have the clear list of, uh, of resources you want to render. Or in here, you can uh, you have uh, some more details about the templates, uh, how to play with the templates, how to render those data, some optional language selection, and in the end, uh, you have quite a lot of. Uh, yeah, it's quite long. You see. Okay, so what would be the most straightforward usage of this for KBSS page? I think that uh, idea? if some ideas uh, are that uh, we could, we could everything we have there uh, basically now in HTML, we could uh, store it in the RDF uh, somewhere, use it as the RDF uh, uh, store and uh, just use it for uh, rendering the pages. 
for example. Yeah, we actually do have some of the data in uh, in uh, GraphDB. Uh, that's yeah. sample data that I was providing to to Matej when he, he was working on the live frame plugin. Yes. It actually has the the benefit over this solution that it does support returning mm -hmm. the format, uh, based on the client's request. So it can return RDF data if, if the client mm -hmm. asks for it. Basically, we can have some uh, triple store uh, with the data and uh, we can return uh, the data from that store if the client asks for that. And uh, moreover, we can use just the, just this uh, RDF, uh, GQL RDF plugin uh, with the remote uh, attribute, uh, which is set uh, to that endpoint, and we can build the whole pages from that. Uh, it just takes some uh, work with the templates. That's all. Mm -hmm. You see, remote endpoint uh, defines a Spark endpoint to get the data from. So, so that's it. Okay, it would be it would be good to test it on I don't know, for example, on people. We can Just... we can do that, yeah. Okay. Uh, if I look, yeah, I was uh, thinking about it too. This is uh, also because uh, this is also that uh, that example I have used. <laughs> If I look in the team, uh, it would be possible just to create uh, the class team and then then have some uh, property uh, team member, and the list of those members uh, may be listed in this way, and it can be generated from the uh, from the uh, RDF uh, table store. That's it. We can have uh, all those. No, it's it's quite uh, easy to create a template uh, which would render something like this. Uh, you can look in the uh, KBSS repository on GraphDB at one top. Uh, uh, it's on the first shoot. GraphDB on the first shoot server. Okay. Yeah. And if you if you use the KBSS repository. First. Do I have to log in? Yeah, mm -hmm. we don't have to log in. Yeah, and if you export the export the classes, for example, or the graph, or whatever. So, so there is an organization KPSS, and uh, see, it has oh, and then... Yeah, it's based on the fourth uh, vocabulary. Yeah. So, if we update uh, those data uh, in a way. It this in the KBSS in here. Why not? It's, it would be quite easy. Okay, so let's let's make an issue for that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. So, so I see that it was quite interesting for you. Looks like. <laughs> and yes, I'm just okay. So I'm stopping the sharing and I'm stopping the uh, 